Hi, this is Mike from Radiant Photography, and I'm in Austin, Texas, photographing a conference. So I thought I would share some tips about how to photograph a conference or a corporate event and the, these I mean the way I, I got hooked up with this conference is actually I was a conference attendee uh, and a couple of years ago I asked them if if they needed any help with this uh, with photographing the conference and so that's that's how you get these kinds of connections uh, they said yeah sure this this would be great uh, we'd, we'd love to to, to uh, have you do this for us and uh, that that was that was how I, I connected with the gig. Um, and so there's a, this particular conference is a scientific conference that I'm, I'm doing. So um, it's, a, it's a little bit different than other like corporate events that you might be, uh, might be photographing, but there's a lot of similarities as well. Um, so the first kind of uh, photograph you take is during a presentation. Um, and so these are basically when you have somebody up in front of a room at a podium talking um, and and you want to be able to capture them given this presentation. Sometimes it's a more important person if it's kind of a keynote speaker um, that you want to be able to, to make sure you capture that, that moment. Um, the, the first rule when you're doing this kind of thing is that you want to avoid using flash at all costs. Leave your flash at home um, because you really don't want to be uh, intruding on the talk. You, you don't want people to really know that you're there. Um, and so this means that you need a fast lens because usually these rooms are darker and you're not using any kind of flash. Um, and so you really need to get as much light in the camera as you can. Um, this kind of thing, usually I would, I would put the 70 to 200 f2.8 on, on my camera and leave it there. Um, and so that's that's kind of what what kind of gear you should be uh, approached at. Make sure you don't underexpose images, but also make sure that if if the stage is lit, that you're you don't have you're not overexposing any highlights. Sometimes um, you have to compensate for exposure because you have a bright light on stage, and that's a relatively small part of the image, and so the camera's over, tending to overexpose. Um, and so you either get to use exposure compensation uh, to take care of that or you can just switch to manual um, manual exposure on your camera and find something that works and stick with it because usually the lights in these rooms don't change um, and so for for instance for the, the conference that I'm photographing right now um, the one if I'm photographing in one uh, one of the larger presentation rooms I am I have a set manual exposure I know what I should be at, and I know where I'm not going to be clipping any highlights, um, but still um, have everybody in proper focus. Um, and so, again, I, I, I'm saying try to include the audience in, in this photograph, so or, or in the photos, because otherwise you're not really taking a portrait of the person given the presentation. I mean, sure, take a couple of images that are, are close up, kind of like maybe with an intense uh, or, or thoughtful look of, of the presenter. Um, but overall, what you really want to do is capture the, the feel of being there, and, and that, that means uh, having the audience involved in the shot. Um, so there's two ways you can do this. Uh, one is, is, like I was saying, go with the 70 to 200, but don't be in the front row. Um, try to move back a little ways so you get the heads of people, of the audience members, watching the presentation. Um, and so that, that's, that's one option. Um, the other option is to go to the front row and go wide. Um, if you have an ultra wide angle lens, uh, go on one one side of the stage, um, and so you can capture and make sure that the presenter is still the main um, focus of the image. Um, and that means making sure they're that you're close enough so that that they appear larger, um, or they're they're going to be lit, so that will kind of pull them out of the frame too. Um, but also then make sure that that you get the audience members kind of on the side of viewing the 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 presenter, um, and so that's another another option uh, that can work really well. Um, 
The second kind of photos you're going to be taking are hallway photos. And these, these are photos that, that just people um, going, <coughs> going between sessions. And, um, and you want to be able to capture conversations of, of who, who's, who's there, um, people interacting, people having a good time. Um, and so forth. And th this could be at, at social events that are hosted by the conference as well. Um, but, but really, a lot of times they're, they're hallway photos. Um, one thing you want to do at the conference, and ask at the beginning of the conference, the, the, the conference organizers will often know um, what are important, like more notable attendees. Um, learn to recognize these people that basically are either leaders in their field or uh, just are, are notable that they're there. <coughs> Excuse me. So you want to you want to make sure that you can capture these people in, in the hallways as they're interacting with other people as well. And don't just focus on them, but, but if you have a who's who of, of people that are important that are there, uh, that will help you capture photos that are more valuable to, to the, the conference organizers. Um, and so try learn to recognize them. Um, in the hallway, uh, I, I like to go wide in the hallways because, um, and, and here's, here's the thing, when, it, when you have like a big talk where you have hundreds of people going in or out of a room, that can really give you some good opportunities to, to have a wide angle, hold the pie over your head and, and just start capturing photos looking down um, because you get like the feel, like the, the rush going in or the people coming out ready to, to grab lunch or or move on with the conference and stuff, and, and uh, usually people, it's, it's a time when people are pretty excited or, or anxious or, or to, to anticipating a session kind of thing, um, and, so, and so it can capture some really good images. Um, the other type of hallway photo uh, is, is when you're trying to capture conversations between two people uh, in the hallway in between sessions, and that, um, that you could use a longer lens for. I mean, either uh, if you're out around maybe 100 millimeters or so, um, then that way you can um, get an idea, like you, you aren't interrupting the conversation, um, but you're able to like kind of capture, they might know that you're there, and usually if you wait a few seconds for people to recognize you, that's better, um, because then you're not, they're, they, will recognize you and then they'll often move on with their conversation. Um, and so we, you want to the, the capture that candid moment where they're not, you don't want to get a deer in a headlights look. So um, again, you could use a longer lens so you're not in, in the middle of the conversation. Um, it really depends on the type of, of room that you're in, um, how, how, what the best way is to do this. Um, if you're in kind of like an, a, a, I've been at places where there's just like a smaller atrium, Sometimes you could take a photos across the atrium and not interrupt conversations. Um, if there, if people are at like a, a railing or something, and you can be thirty feet or so on the other side of that atrium, of taking photos uh, of people having conversing on the other sides. I mean that that kind of thing that setup works really well. Um, but I mean, it, it really every room is different, um, and so it it just kind of depends how you want to approach it. Um, the the other um, the other type of session you want to want you might be photographing if you're especially if you're a science at a scientific conference uh, are poster sessions. Now poster sessions are usually when people are presenting their research and they've done a project and they're kind of this is kind of summarize their poster summarizes the, the work that they've been doing um, without having a, them uh, instructing a full session. Um, and these these are important too, but just because a lot of times, I mean, there's there's a lot of work that's done that doesn't necessarily get its own session, but has, I mean, they have a poster there, and and it's it's important to kind of capture these interactions because a lot of collaboration happens during a poster session. Um, a lot of um, uh, uh, people might might meet others that are working on similar work that they are and and start collaborating from it. Um, and, and it's, it's just a, a, an overall good experience to kind of capture. Um, the best way to capture something like this is to, is to get in close to the conversation and, and go wide angle on it. Um, and the closer the better. Uh, you don't want to, 
if you're taking a photo of, of something like this, like some kind of interaction like this, um, you, you want to be the photo, the, the viewer of the photo to feel like as if they were part of the conversation as well. And so you want to wait, like approach them. I mean, it, oftentimes you'll have multiple people looking at a poster and, and having the person who, who created the poster kind of presenting and having a mini presentation to them. Um, and so go up as, as you're viewing the, as if you're viewing the poster, um, kind of be there for a few seconds, wait, I mean, again, it's important, wait for them to notice, notice you because what you don't want is kind of like to take a picture, have them turning, looking at you as you're taking the picture and get this deer in the headlights look. That's, uh, it's not going to work out that the picture's going to be a throwaway anyway. Um, and so especially for posters, I mean, it's something where I would often stand there for maybe 10, 15 seconds. Um, with my camera up, just kind of just getting them to, to notice me, and then they move on to their conversation or the presentation that the, that's the conversation that's happening uh, at that time. Um, and so this way, you get people in more of a natural state. Um, the other thing uh, you want to wait for them to do is, oftentimes, I mean, if you just get a photo of two people having having a conversation, and and they're not like you. You want them to be active in some way, I guess is, is what I'm saying. Um, and so the best way to do this during a poster presentation is oftentimes people will point at the poster um, as, as re referencing something on, on the poster itself. And that's the best time to capture the image because you get this active, um, this active uh, moment between two or three people. Um, and, it, and it really kind of is, is a good, good well, way to capture uh, uh, that conversation. Um, the other thing is, is that uh, don't chimp in these kinds of situations. I mean, you you are there. You're you're providing some interruption in the conversation. Although usually poster sessions, there's lots of conversations happening in the background. Um, it's really a busy room, and so it's it's not like you're being too intrusive. You can get you can get away with being closer uh, in this kind of situation. Um, but you still don't want to interrupt. The conversation that's happening, um, and so don't don't chimp your photos when when you're there. Wait until after you've moved on and, and check to see if you need to make any exposure adjustments or so forth. The first couple usually you end up throwing away um, just because you're you're kind of dialing in your your camera settings in, in that kind of situation. Um, but um, yeah, and again with this, I mean you don't want to be too intrusive. Take one photo. Flash is okay. Um, and preferred, actually, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that afterwards. But take one photo and then move on to the next conversation. Um, and so that's a good way to go. Um, moving back to the, the whole flash, um, you want to expose for the room that you're in, and a lot of times post assessments are in a big exhibit hall kind of room, depending on the size of the conference. And so lighting in there can be challenging. Um, a lot of times they'll be using fluorescent style lamps and it's not um, not ideal and so you might want to gel your flash so that you don't have to worry about color balance later on or, or white balance later on. Um, the other thing is that yeah flash is definitely okay but expose to the room. Um, get what your exposure would be for that room so that your flash isn't like a blinding flash and so this means using uh, high RIS, ISOs on your camera uh, using a, um, I mean you can only go so uh, wide on your aperture because if you go too wide you're not going to get both people in focus. Um, and so oftentimes for something like this, uh, somewhere around f4 is good. Um, and so what you really do need is a, a camera that can go at a higher ISO if you're in a darker room. Uh, and then have the flash on, but you just use it to, to, as fill flash to, to kill some of the shadows um, and, and make the people look just that much better. Um, so so that's, that's, those are my tips for, for photographing different, different types of sessions at, at a conference. Uh, this, this week I'll, I'll be here in Austin for, for four or five days. Uh, doing this, uh, and I, I totally recommend it. It's a, it's it's a great kind of photography where, in most situations, you can be kind of um, just uh, photographing thing things as they happen, uh, and so it doesn't require any kind of posing or anything like that. 
Uh, it depends. Sometimes conferences will want you to have group shots and stuff that you'll want to pay attention to posing and so forth. Um, and so be prepared for that, but most of the time you're not having to worry about that. You're just kind of capturing the event um, and, 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 and just kind of being there. Um, and so that, that is kind of what you're trying to, to communicate to people who view your photos. You're trying to get them to feel how, what it was like to be there. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's good luck. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. Click like if you like this video. Uh, and I'll see you next time. This is Mike from Radiant Photography.